Welcome back to the LinkedIn clone. In this video, we'll be working on the friend request management. In the previous video, we set up the ability to add friend requests. So I'm logged in as Mark Smith here, and I've received two friend requests from John Peping and Larry Powell. If I have a look at the database, we can see that for our four users here, we also have the friend requests that have been sent and they're all in the pending state. So user one or John Peping has sent a request to users two, three, and four, and user three has sent a request to user two. And user two is the Mark Power, so that's why we're seeing these two requests uh, for that receiver ID of two there. So let's see what happens if I accept John and decline Larry. We see that that modal has disappeared as well, or the popover component, and the number here has also been changed to zero. If we look in the database and we refresh it, we can see that the first request has been accepted and the other request has been declined. So let's get started. And we're just going to make a very small tweak to the back end because when we get the friend request, in addition to the friend request data that we get from this table, we also need information of that user, and that is a foreign key in this table back to the user's table. So if I open up the back end, I'm in the API folder, and I go to get friend requests from recipients, we see that we're just finding where the receiver is the current user, and in addition to that, we just want to add on some relations here. So the relations are going to go back to that table. So to the user table. And it's going to join them between the user table and this uh, friend request table. On these two keys here, the receiver and the creator. And I have the user controller open just so we know what the endpoints are, so we can type them in on the front end. So I'm just going to go ahead and run the server here. So in the API folder, I'm just running an npm run start colon dev, should get the API server going up. And I can also just cd into the LinkedIn folder here and we can begin to work on the functionality of the friend request system. So I'm just going to generate two components here. If we go to our LinkedIn folder structure, we can see in our app we have this home module here, and I'm going to use this module to put the home of the users and also the profile and the friend request popover. So we can use the Angular and the Ionic CLI to generate a component. And we're gonna put it into that home folder, into the components folder. And we'll have a component and we'll call it user profile. And we can just open that up. And we can just go ahead and delete this spec file here. We don't need that. I'm also going to generate a component for um, inside the header. Because right now, well, I've disconnected from the server um, in my example demo. But we had a, if you clicked here, you get this pop over here to accept the friend request we want another popover here. So within the header, I'm gonna have a nested popover, a secondary popover, and perhaps you'd wanna rename this now popover to something else, but I'm just gonna keep it as is. Um, but basically, I want to generate the component in the header folder, and I'm just going to call this friend request popover to distinguish it from the other popover. And we can see that it generated that for us. Once again, we'll just 
delete the spec file. Now in the home module, we will need to add those dependencies manually. So, okay, that's the app module, but in the home module, we can just go ahead and we can copy these names of these components into our declarations. Of course, we're going to need a control period to import that in. And we'll also need the friend request popover component that we just generated. So let's import that as well. And now we can run an Ionic serve. And we can get the current state of our application back up. <clears throat> so I've just created four users here, John, John 2, John 3, John 4. And if I go ahead and I sign in as the first John here, we can see, well, we'll have to firstly create posts. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this quickly. So I've gone and I've added the four posts for each of one of the users. And I've also added a couple of friend requests. So I'll just show you one. If I go to John 3 here, John 3 has already sent me a request. If I go to John 2, I can send him a request. And if I go back and I open up the table for request, and I view all the rows here, we can see that I've made five requests. And we can see that actually we have a creator ID of five, six, and one here. Um, because uh, when I deleted some rows before, it changed the ID here. But everything should still be working fine. But essentially, I've sent a bunch of requests here. And from the user 3 and 4, I've sent a request to user 1. And I want to be able to display that in the browser and also respond to those requests. So let's go ahead and work on that. And one thing to note is in the application, this navigation bar has been duplicated in two areas. So I want to refactor that out first, and then we'll add the functionality to it after that. So if we go and we open up our, uh, and we'll close the home module here. And actually we'll just close these here too for now. But if I go back to the front end project here and I go to the app into the home, we can see that we have this home routing module and we also have this home page. Now right now the home page has the uh, everything on it, but we want to navigate between the home page and also the users component so our page and also the users component so what we need to do is we need to copy this code here and we need to put it into the home page so the user profile component that we made so we'll have this user profile component here and that's the logged in user. And then we'll also have the um, friend request uh, profile component. So we've created that previously, the connection profile component here. And this has a reference to app header as well. So we do just want to refactor this user this stuff here out into the user profile component. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this out here and paste it in here. Now we're going to need some methods and we we'll also need the CSS. Now all this CSS here can just be cut from the home page. If you want, you can delete that CSS file because there's nothing in it, but I'm just gonna leave it there for now. Um, so you paste that in there. And then we'll also need the TypeScript, and the TypeScript's pretty simple, I believe. All it's doing for us is it's just setting the body. So I can actually cut this out here from the home page and put that into the component here. And now if I save this, 
save this and save this we've just refactored the user profile out of the home page into its own separate component now we don't need on a knit now since we aren't using that and we don't even need the constructor but I'll just leave it there anyway for further injection so now that we've got that component sorted what we want to do in the home page so in the connection profile component we just want to delete this header here and in the home page we actually just want to we either want to route out the um, the connection profile component or the user profile component so what I'll do if I go to the home routing module is I'm just going to change these imports a little the um, routing sorry the routing not the imports um, so basically we want to display the home page and then we also want to route to one of the other two components so the home page has the app header encapsulated in it and if I get the iron router outlet there because that just wraps the regular outlet we can just save that now at the moment that's not going to do anything for us but if we come to our home routing module we can go ahead and we can say okay on the home page which is just the app header and also the pages we're navigating to we want to have two children here and the first is going to be the user profile component so if you're on the path just blank so the home page itself we can go ahead and we can use the component and then this is where we can import the user profile component but if we want to go to a specific user we can pass in the dynamic ID here and refer them to the connection profile component let's just go ahead and save that and let's see where we're at okay so we've got the home page there's a little bit of a spacing issue here but if we go to another user we still everything's working but we got the navigation bar refactored out now so let's just get that little bit of spacing going so if I open up the user profile component SCSS file we can just go ahead and just add a little bit more margin here save that there so top margin and then we got that nice spacing there and if we go to a page we can close this now but in our connection profile component we can just go ahead and we can give it some spacing in an analogous way so we can just say okay we'll make this 110 pixels and there is this uh, extra element around it which has its own um, margin in the other component so that's why you just have this extra 10 pixels here um, and I just eyeballed the spacing basically so now we have that spaced out nicely and we got this refactored we can begin to work on the actual functionality of the friend request system so we designate the logic of our application to the service and if we open up our services here we got this connection profile service where we had the ability to get the connection the get the friend request and add connections so now what I want to do is to be able to get the connection requests for that particular user and also respond to those connection requests so let's say I want to get the friend requests we know that this is going to be an observable and it's going to be of the friend request type it's going to be an array of them and I can just copy the get method from above here 
so you can use the HTTP client to get the friend requests the array of them and it's going to be getting them from the endpoint get friend request me receive request so I can copy this here and I can get rid of that variable and that's the endpoint to get the request and the service method that we'll use elsewhere I also want to have the ability to respond to friend request so this is going to be more like the post method so if I go ahead and copy this I can copy this down here and then I can rename this method respond to friend request so this is the ability to manage the friend request now you're going to need the ID number here of the connection request or the friend request and we'll also need the status response so the status response is going to be a subset of all of the uh, status responses and in particular we are only interested in accepting or pending so ah, sorry accepted or declined because pending and the other options they're not definite but if we're responding to the request we're having a definite action here so it's going to, either going to be accepted or declined and rather than getting this friend request back actually we will get a friend request back if we take a look at the controller here we do get the friend request back when we update that status so I can close this backend controller here now and rather than this error we're just going to say okay we're expecting a friend request to be coming back so we can remove it from the generic type on the post method and we just need to change the route and I didn't save that uh, from the controller that I just closed so let's just get that and we can go ahead and we can get this and we can go ahead and say at the endpoint user slash friend request slash response and then the ID of the friend request what we can do is we can pass in the status and that's just going to be the status that we have here and then we have our HTTP options which is just JSON as uh, defined before so we have our service methods ready to go now we can make use of this in our header component so if I open up the header component and I open up the TypeScript file right now we just have this method here that's presenting the popover of the logged in user and there's also a subscription that's being managed uh, to get the image that you see in the top right here so we also want to add the another badge here so let's go ahead and do that and we'll just hard code that for the moment and then we'll connect it to our uh, service so if I go ahead and I open up the header here we can see that we have this iron badge here I'm gonna go ahead and copy this here and I'm just going to go up a little bit here to my network and just below this icon but above the text here I'm going to copy this uh, badge here now if I take a look we see that we got this badge here and I might just move it over to the right just a patch so if I go back over here and we have this margin left we might just make this say negative 8 pixels and right now we just got this hard coded value but we'll change that shortly 
So if we go back into our header component, into our TypeScript file, this is where we can actually have another popover component. So basically, if I click on the friend request component, I want to, sorry, the friend request icon or this uh, people icon. If I click on this column here, I want to open up a separate modal. So, or a popover component. So basically, I need the, I need to copy this code here and bring it down one. And we'll just call it present friend request popover to distinguish that it's a different popover. Now it's going to be quite similar. We'll even have the same class here, but we'll call this the friend request popover component. That's what we'll need to import. Now we don't need any props in this case because we're going to use a service. So, yep. Well, that's all good. We can just leave that there like that. And this means when we come to the header here, we can have the ability to open that. So if I just pass on the, uh, and I'll copy it from below, this here, this click event, if I pass that here on the column here, I'm going to just use the name of this popover and put it in here. And Put a quote here to close that part up. Now this will fire every time and we're going to later check for the case that there's nothing in the friend request. And if there's no friend request we won't allow that to open and we'll do that with an if statement before this click here. Um, but now we can see we get this friend request pop over works. Now obviously we want to make it into a card. So let's go ahead and open the friend request component up. The popover component that is. And what we can do is we can copy our other popover. And we'll just see if there's any styling or anything like that. Iron card content. Uh, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to copy this HTML over into the friend request here. And basically I'm just going to delete a few things here. So I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to delete this iron card content and this method here and this divider. I'm also going to delete this iron card content here and also here as well. So I'm just going to get rid of all of that. <coughs> now I will have the iron card and the iron header with our layout with the iron grid row and coals. Right now I just want to uh, so we're going to need an image. So I'm just going to comment this out for now. And for the iron card title, I'm just going to hard code this for now. The subtitle we won't need. So we'll get rid of that. And we will have a another iron row here and in this iron row we're going to have our buttons so we're going to have two iron buttons actually I might just do one and then duplicate it later and here we're just going to have accept and we're going to have a click event but we won't create that just yet we'll have expand equal to block size equal to small 
fill equal to outline and we want the color to be the primary color here and then I'm just going to copy this down one but rather than the primary color we'll have the danger color and then we'll have decline here so let's just go ahead and save that see where it's looking like so now if I open up this popover component we get the popover here oh and we still got this view profile that we'll delete the image we're going to come back to and it's going to be nested to the left here of a certain size um, and then for multiple requests we're just going to have a for loop and have them coming down here like this so we can delete this view profile button get rid of that so now we're going to need some data so that means we're going to need to work on the TypeScript file and I'm just going to close the popover component so I'll close that as well now in the friend request popover component here we're going to need the controller because we're going to want to close it so if we get the private pop over controller and that's of the type pop over controller and that's going to come in from ionic angular but recall that we've made this connection profile service here as well and this has those methods that we just created to get the friend requests that we're going to need in there and then also the ability to respond to those requests so let's bring this in so in addition to that controller here I'm going to have the connection profile service of the type connection profile service a bit of lowercase c here and import that in so what we want to do well we want the ability to respond to a request but we'll set that up later on first we just want to get the data so if we look at the connection profile service we want to extend this just a little bit so we have access to a property so let's go ahead and do that so right at the top here for our public method we can have our friend request which is of the type friend request array and this is going to be set at various uh, locations so basically when we get the friend request we want to set it so above this return statement here and actually rather than doing it here we're going to want to set it in the header component and in the header components uh, calling the popover component so if I just come to this header component we can see that we've got this user full image path and user image path subscription so we want to do the same sort of thing but for our friend requests and the friend request is going to be an array of friend requests and the subscription to the friend request because obviously when you accept or decline it's going to change the state and there's going to be less or fewer or more or the same amount of friend requests and you can also log out and log in so you want to have a subscription that subscribes to the uh, friend request and then we'll update here so we're going to need the controller so we need this connection profile service controller let's get it we can make this public and we can say 
get the connection profile service because we want to public because we will want to use the uh, met the property directly into the template here and that way everything will be uh, in harmony so we've got that now in this ng on a knit we set up this user image path subscription here so I'm going to do the same thing for this friend request subscription so I'm going to set this dot friend request subscription into something and that means I'm also going to need to use the unsubscribe method on the ng on destroy so if I go back to the subscription what I want to do is I actually want to use the connection profile service and that method we made to get the connection request or get the friend request we want that so to get the observable get the data from it we need to subscribe to it and basically we're going to need the friend request of the type friend request array and I might just bring this to the next line here basically for our friend requests that we have what I want to do is I want to say well we're going to have a bunch of friend requests but we only want the ones for example in our database here um, now these are pending but if you accepted one it's getting all the requests so you could filter at the API level but um, you know it's good to filter it on the front end as well so you have knowledge on how to do it from both perspectives so we've seen it on the back end so let's try to on the front end so if they accept or decline you don't want to see that so basically you just want to filter that state out so <coughs> And this is why I've set a property on the connection profile services on the service here this um, friend request property because I want a global place where this is being set and then I'm subscribing to that and then I can have a consistent value elsewhere in my application so there's many ways you could architect this application um, as you see I've sort of been doing it in various ways throughout the application there is this idea that you want everything to be consistent and that is true um, however because this is a tutorial I wanted to show you all the different various ways you want to do you could do something and then you can choose and make the decision for yourself of how you want to architect your application so I'm just going to say um, for each of the friend requests that we got back what I want to do is I just want to filter them out based on the friend request and this is going to be a singular this case so for the friend request that we got there back from all the friend requests we want to filter something out and basically if the friend request if the status is equal to pending then we'll return those and then we'll set it to this connection profile service here so let's go ahead and save that so with that we can actually go into the HTML of our header component and we now have um, some information so on this connection profile service here we now have information relating to that and we have it in the friend request here so let's just go to our application here basically on that column that we created here uh, sorry here for the friend request popover component we also want to check that the connection profile service if that you know if the friend request exists because it might not exist um, 
due to it not being set here uh, and then if you get something nothing back it might not be set so if that is true and it has a length that's greater than zero so there is something we just want to run this function so you can actually just say and here because this will evaluate to true and when that evaluates to true uh, it will just look at this function here and it will execute it but if this is false this won't run so basically what I want to do in the badge I want to display this number here dynamically so on the badge here I can say well we can basically have something like this here and we can have an expression here where if this connection profile exists and the friend request has some sort of length um, you know display that but if it doesn't just go ahead and display zero here so let's go ahead and look at that so we're getting a zero here and actually we don't even need the friend request here uh, another thing I spotted while I was looking for that is just the HTTP should be a put here um, but that will come on later on so I've just modified the code slightly in the header component where I set the friend request subscription equal to the connection profile service you get the friends you subscribe to it and then for all the friends that you get back I want to filter on the pending and then I also set the variable of the profile service to um, the property friend request I set that equal to all of the friend requests that are pending because you could have friend requests that are accepted or declined and then I just filter out the uh, friend request and friend request status equals pending so I just had a syntax error just before and I was looking for that um, and then in the template we basically say you can click the component if the friend request has a length greater than zero and we see that we get this pop-up here I'm going to click off that and we also show the length there if it exists otherwise we show zero so that's the uh, UI side of things set up for showing the friend requests now I do want to tap into the friend request popover component and use that data so basically we've got the connection profile service and the popover controller now on the end on a knit what we want to do is we want to use that connection profile service we want to go to those variables that we've set for the friend request and we basically we want to go through them so we can use the map operator here and this is not the this is the JavaScript map operator rather than the RxJS map operator it pretty much does a similar thing here but what we need to do is we take each friend request that we get so we're cycling through all the friend requests and for any one given friend request what we want to do is we just want to get the ID of the creator so if you're looking at the friend request here we got the creator ID here so when we get the um, however when we get the data back when we even though in the Postgres database we have creator ID and receiver ID here um, because we have a relation between that um, 
table here and the user table we're going to get a nested data structure back so we're going to get creator back you could have a separate type for that um, but I'm just going to do the workaround solution and that is just setting the creator ID based on the friend requests that we got and we need to cast this as any because we know that there's this creator for the creator we have an ID on that creator and this should be creator obviously with any type we're not getting good intelligence anymore that's one of the downsides of this approach uh, you could have a separate API call or another uh, data type but we've seen how we can do all those sorts of things and uh, sometimes it's good to figure out how to do some workaround solutions as well so basically if the friend request if there is a friend request firstly and we have a creator ID that means that what we want to do is we actually want to call this uh, connection profile service and we want to get the connection user here so even though that we've set the we have access to the uh, all of the profiles from this connection profile service we actually we still want to get the connection user um, because what we want to do here and I think I've called this something else if I open up the component for the connection profile service and we have this get connection user method here um, basically we want to get the user of the page that we're on um, so we're able to get the image path for that particular user because right now we're just getting the data in this form so we have this creator based on the creator ID here but when we show the image we need information back from the user table so to do that we call this get connection user method here and from that we can pass in the creator ID and then we can just go ahead and we can pipe into that observable we can take one so we don't have to unsubscribe from it and then when we have that imported we can run a second pipeable operator so I'll just put a comma here and the second pipeable operator that we want to use is tap because we want to tap into the user that we're getting back from there but we don't really need to do anything with it um, other than set some variables here so let's just bring in these here and now I have the user object relating to the profile that we're after we can just say okay what we want to do is we are going to append we're going to add a property to the uh, friend request object so because we're in this um, friend request loop for each of the um, friend requests we can actually go ahead and we can use that and we can say okay we can so normally you'd get this create ID ID and stuff um, but we want the image path and more precisely the full image path so I may have created a getter somewhere else in application but I'm just gonna hard code it here and I'll leave it up to you to refactor but essentially what I'm gonna copy here is I'm just going to copy the endpoint here and basically there's two scenarios here that could happen either there could be a user and if there's a user um, they would have an image path um, but if this returns back null 
we will just post in the blank profile image that's just on our server here. And then after the um, this is all done here, we can go ahead and subscribe. And actually we want to do this after this pipe here. So we can just go ahead and subscribe. And we're only taking one so we don't have to unsubscribe. Um, so basically we're mapping through all of the friend requests and we're getting a user based on the creator ID and then that way we're able to get the full image path for that particular user that sent us a friend request. So now we have access to that. We can come to our template here and we can just add a few if checks here. So obviously we don't want anything to come up if we don't have a any users. So this is going to be this dot connection service dot friend request here. So if this doesn't exist, and we'll go ahead and we'll just make this public so we can use it in the template. So now we can see if there if there is a friend request set and there should be at this stage because we're in the popover component um, and it's coming from the header and the header won't call it unless there is but just to be sure um, what we can do just below this iron grid here where we have the row we can actually have an ng container because we want a dom element uh, we don't want a dom element but we want some logic uh, with an ng4 so basically we want to go through each of the connection requests that we have so we can say let friend request of this dot connection profile service and actually I'll put the whole thing here now you don't need the Elvis operator because if it makes pass the if check it's going to have that um, but we're looping through all of that and now we should be able to display our image here so we've got the user full image path I want to change this so we'll change it and because we've done the hack solution we need to cast the uh, particular friend request that we're on um, such that we can access the appended object property so that's the full image path and while we're here we may as well in the title here we'll get rid of one of them and then we'll write in the string interpolation we'll do the same sort of thing so we can still use the any type here we can use this JavaScript um, and we can go ahead or TypeScript and we can get the creator first name and I'm also going to do the same thing here and then just put a space here for the creator last name so let's save this and I'll get my window back up my uh, Explorer so if I look at my friend request here you can see that well user 3 and 4 they both don't have a friend request um, so if I just go ahead and uh, let's see here if I log in as user 2 let's go to user 2 so user 2 has sent me a request so rather than log in and log out um,
actually I will just log in and log out. It's going to be the easiest thing to do here. Um, so if I log in as John2 at hotmail.com and what I want to do here is oh I wanted to log in as John3 um, but let's say I go to my uh, popover component here so John1 has sent us a message and we can see quite clearly that the profile image is there so now we want the ability to accept and decline the requests and show that in the UI. So let's go back to our code here. And if we go to our friend request popover service uh, component, and I'm just looking at the service because we want to use this response to friend request where it takes either accepted or decline um, which is a partial of the status uh, of the friend request but basically what I want to do here is I just want to have another method and I've got this popover controller so because I want to close the controller in a certain scenario when there's no more um, if there's, if you know, if you click on something and then you click on something and there's nothing left in there, I want to just close that because it looks a bit weird if there's a box just there without any content. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to blow this ng on and in. And of course you could refactor this out and you probably should into another function, but I'll leave that up to you. Um, is I'm going to have this a, a sync function here. Uh, respond to friend request and it's a sync because I need to use the popover controller and I need to wait for something like that and this is just the easiest approach to do that uh, the built-in capabilities so we know that basically this is going to take in this so there's going to be an ID and a number and I'm purposely not putting the response type here because we've got this a sync keyword and then there's a promise and then it's not consistent with our observable um, return statements and it's not that useful to us anyway you could put a comment here or something like that but uh, I'm not going to worry about that so basically we're going to have um, two cases here we're going to have the case that we have a handled friend request and there's also going to be a case where we have an unhandled friend request. So how do you know? Well basically if we have a handled friend request and we can only handle one at a time so let's write this out so let's say we have a handled friend request. This is going to be of the type friend request. This is going to relate to our service. So in our connection profile service where we have our friend request, we have that object there that we're tapping into in multiple places. Um, actually it's an array, but it's a property that we're tapping into multiple places and basically what I want to do here is I want to find the particular friend request so I'm going to do this on the next line here I want to find the particular friend request where and it's or uh, type script is inferring the type here as friend request and it's sort of implied through um, what we're finding is the observable here. Uh, you could add it here as well if you wanted to, that's up to you. Um, but essentially, I just want to get the ID of the friend request. And if that ID matches the ID that we're passed in here, um, basically I'll be able to respond to the friend request. So we'll pass the ID in in these buttons here and we have access to the ID of the particular um, 
user through the friend request here. So if that ID matches that of the UI's uh, local ID um, in memory, then basically uh, that's that's what we want to do here is get that handled friend request. So we'll get that handled friend request back. Otherwise, we'll have the case where we have an unhandled friend request. I'm going to copy this down, but use a different higher, uh, higher order function here. So you could have an unhandled friend request. And this is going to... And this you can get multiple unhandled friend requests because imagine you had 10 people send you a request. You can only respond to one. So when you respond to one, the other nine will be unhandled. So the unhandled friend request, this is going to be an array of friend requests. And on the friend request property, we just want to filter through all of the friend requests. And for each singular friend request, if the friend request ID is not equal, to the handled friend request dot ID then we have the unhandled friend request so we have information of the ID of the particular friend request that we're accepting or declining and based on that ID we can determine all of the other unhandled friend requests um, you could essentially bring this code into uh, a one liner but I thought I'd make things more explicit here uh, to for the understanding purposes So this means that if I go to the connection profile service I can get the friend request and then I can set that equal to the unhandled friend request So what I've done is I've taken all the friend requests. I've handled one of them and I then want to remove that from the DOM so you only see one of the uh, requests or the remaining requests um, but then of course you need to handle the request um, and that gets done by setting it equal to this connection profile service and recall that this um, property here or this array of friend requests this is a value that's being used uh, all throughout our application uh, and it's aware of it in the component level so if I just if there's no if there's no um, if there's none left though, so basically what you want to do is you get the friend request here. Now it could be the case that you had one, but then you handled it, and then there's no more here to filter out, and then this one got removed. Um, so then that disappears, but you'll still have the empty box open, and in this case, it may not exist. So the friend request uh, like it probably it's probably an empty array but just to check if the friend request uh, no longer exists basically what I want to do here is I want to await for the popover controller and the popover controller it knows that it's this popover rather than the other popover because we specified the component that it relates to and there's no weird behavior that interacts between the two popover components you open one you close the other so you can just go ahead and dismiss this and that's an asynchronous event so that's why we have the async await keywords here um, it would be too much of a pain to convert that into the observable syntax and quite frankly it's not even worth it so basically if you go to the connection profile service and you get your friend request um, this is essentially what you want to be uh, working with so actually if you return if we go ahead and we return this dot connection profile service um, then we're able to respond to our friend request here so I might actually make that a type after. Oh, actually I won't because of the async keyword. Um, but you might want to comment that up the top or something like that. 
Uh, but it's sort of implied through this service method here where we can respond um, or give our response to the friend request. And I might already name this to respond to a friend request. Um, so basically we need to pass in the ID so we can get the ID from the particular user that we handled the request from. And we're also going to need this status response. It's either going to be accepted or declined. And because this is a observable, we want to just pipe into this and take one. You could do this pattern pipe one, take one at the service level, but that's personal preference. I find it kind of, if you start to do it at the service level, sometimes you come to component level and you forget where it's at. Um, so, I don't know, just a preference. Sometimes I like to put the pipe and the pipe operators at the component level. So uh, when you subscribe to that method, um, you can clearly see in the place that you're using it, the, uh, you know, the behavior of the asynchronous operations. Now, that's not to say that that's the right way to do it. Um, either of them are fine. Uh, it just depends on your preference. Um, and some might even argue that you need to put this pipe take one in multiple places where you, if you need to subscribe to the same method uh, observable elsewhere in the application, and that's totally fine. But I, I think these couple of keystrokes, um, you know, it saves the, well, it saves me the trouble of figuring out and going back to this service every time to check. So pros and cons of both. And then of course you can just go ahead and you can subscribe to that observable. So with that, we now have all of the functionality we need to be able to uh, respond to a friend request. And I'm going to call this respond to friend request. So that means we can simply just call this from our template now. So on these buttons here, I'm going to have a click event. And this is where I'm going to have the respond to friend request function or action being called. And we have the friend request and it's the ID of the friend request. So we don't have to do the any type here. And in the first case where you accept it, you pass in accepted. And in the second case here, you pass in declined. And if I save that, we can reload our page. We're logged in as user two here. In our database, we have all pending. And we're expecting, because we're logged in as user two, uh, that relates to this user five here, I believe. Uh, or was it six? Uh, let's see here. Oh, it's four, four. So where we have this receiver of four and four, we expect there to be the John and this other third person to be having those requests, which we do. So let's go ahead and accept John Papink here. And that closes it up for us. And if we were to, and actually, uh, what I want to do here is the friend request um, if only if the length is equal to zero will I want to close it. So I'll save that. And now if I decline John 3, they'll close that. And if I go to the database here, I can see that we have this accepted and declined state here. So if I go to John Pink, um, we'll have to change this here. So it's accept request is, uh, and it's now accepted.
and if I look at user 3 here we want to hide this here so let's go to the profile there actually let's just log out here and sign in as John Pink. so I'll log out and let's just log in as John1 and if I go to you can see that John3 and John4 have request here so if I go click on John2 we see that we're no longer seeing those buttons and we actually only want this for the first button here so let's save that and now we can still see the message and more so even though we're friends with John2 now that button there has now disappeared because we have this logic where we we'll only show that button if a request has not been sent it's pending or it's waiting for a current user response so it's either not sent or it's pending from either party if it is the case where it's pending we can disable that button but if it's not sent you won't disable that button and then you'll just show some different text accordingly so let's just go back home and I'll just refresh the page here we can see that John 3 and John 4 we can accept John 3 and decline John 4 and if I go and have a look at John 3 here um, it's, it's still accepted um, it's accepted but it's not showing in the UI here but if we were to take a look at the table and update it we can see the receiver of uh, 1 John 1 has accepted the invitation from 5 and John 1 has declined the invitation with the creator ID of 6 here And actually, I'm going to leave that as an exercise for the viewer to be able to change that. It's very important that you're not just following along completely um, and you're able to create and build some of these things and fix bugs uh, by yourself as well. So uh, it should be a trivial change, but I'm just going to leave it there in the application. And um, yeah, that pretty much concludes what I wanted to do today so just to recap what we did is we have the ability to accept friend requests so if I go to um, and you can see this number two here it displays in the reverse order so there should be an example in the code base uh, it shouldn't be too hard to figure out how to get rid of this one here um, you just need to make a couple of changes probably so if I go ahead and I sign in as user 4 for example I'll sign in as user 4 and if I look at user 2 here and connect with user 2 I can make a request here I've already connected with user uh, um, 3 but then if I sign out here and I sign in as john2 at hotmail.com and sign in here and I get this friend request and I can either accept or decline the request Someone's going to accept that request and then it displays in the UI here and also if I look at the table here we see that we've got this new request and 
it has been accepted. So that concludes the friend request management system. Uh, we've done add and managing the requests. So in the next video, I would like to work on using the request to um, begin chatting. So I want to start working on some WebSocket stuff or Socket IO and have the ability to chat between friends in a messaging section. So I'm super excited for that. It's going to be really, really interesting. And um, But before I do that, I might just do a couple of upgrades. So I might upgrade Angular 11 to 12 and Nest, I believe it's 7 to 8, um, just so we can see how to upgrade. And at some point, I might do some error handling and um, testing as well. Um, but only if it's sort of requested. Um, I really want to work on the chatting part of the application. So please let me know what you think and if what you want to be working on. Uh, if you made it this far in the video series, a big congratulations. I believe this is a, quite a large milestone. Um, and we'll just be adding one more feature and handling uh, different bugs and uh, error handling and uh, testing and stuff like that. So if, if the series continues on uh, past that, uh, if not, I might be making some other clones or um, using other technologies and stuff like that. So just let me know what you guys want to see. Uh, anyone watching this video, uh, you made it this far, so you know you deserve to ask for what you want to see. So yeah, uh, thanks so much for watching. And uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Thanks so much for watching.